Hi, welcome to Wine Jam with me, some cash. Uh, like and subscribe at the bottom or even click the bell that they've got to give you notifications of when I next have an episode up and running. We're going to be doing a little bit of wine news, but not a huge amount. Um, I'm actually going to be focusing on my wine cellar. So we're going to be looking at the wines I've had for around 15, 20 years down there. There's only about 10 or so bottles, so it's not a huge amount, but um, it'll be interesting to see whether I should be drinking them now, or if you think I should be drinking them now, or I should... Um, in fact, you're keeping them. But uh, yeah, so have a look at that for as it comes on later on in the show. But I'm going to touch on some of the uh, the wine news uh, as such. There's only kind of my personal wine news, to be absolutely fair with you. Um, I have a local kind of wine uh, merchants in my local area. And I also have a local sort of supermarket chain store. So they're a smaller version of the kind of big guys. And the supermarket uh, store had most of the wines just off the shelves, gone. Um, it was really good to see though that the really bad wines are still at the bottom. Uh, so they were still there and no one was buying them, which is like, yes, for me in, in my books. Uh, but what was even more interesting was when I went over to my wine merchants, um, they had loads of stock of wine in there. And I was kind of surprised that when people were wanting something a lot of, that they were still quite a lot of stock in there you know that's what kind of surprised me a little i just thought i oh, was people not really helping out the local wine merchants you know even when in, in that kind of consideration of of thought but um i don't know whether that's the case uh across uh london or or even england that is the reasoning but i have heard news of e um one particular wine merchants uh, st andrew's wine merchants where he talked about how he actually got a lot of orders coming in and supporting his wine merchant. So uh, it, it may be the case that a lot of orders are going in. I'm not seeing, you know, obviously the, the amounts that are coming and going, but it's still something for me to keep an eye out, see if that's the case. Uh, in other kind of part of that wine news, alcohol, however, has been selling around 22% more than this time last year. Uh, so I don't think anybody wants to do this particular time. <laughs> uh, sober is the best way of putting it. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Well, anyways, that was my piece of wine news. I'm going to go over to the cellar now uh, area and you're going to get to look into my wine. So join me. All right. Hey, so we are in my uh, basement. Uh, so this is where behind me is just where I kind of keep my wines, really. Um, so... It's quite dark in there, obviously, so it's got nice direct sort of light to uh, to kind of be interacting with the wine, which is one of those key things for keeping wine uh, in a good condition. Um, so I'm going to try and pop in here, but I'll have to swap the camera around. So you won't be seeing much of me, but mostly the wines. So I think that's probably actually what you really want to see, actually. So, all right, give me a second. All right, so as I was saying before, this is kind of my um, little um, wine cave, but it's it's a bit of an odd sort of um, way that I kind of do my kind of rest my wines to tell you the truth, because I know um, you have sort of wine uh, slats which kind of help you to keep the wines on a um, sort of horizontal level. But um, one is I kind of put the bags on top to keep it kind of away from dust and anything else. So for the labels, and then I also have them in. Uh, bubble wrap as well um, the other reason is I like to keep them slightly tilted up because from what I've heard is that if you keep the um, the sort of air bottle the little bottle of air which is usually found in the wine uh, around this area then it helps with breathing the wine from uh, the cork area back into the wine and so um, allows it to age better um, yep I have them all kind of bubble wrapped but keeping the ends open so that um, it still allows it to breathe, uh, as you can see there as well. Um, but yeah, so let me just kind of um, go through them and we all kind of had a little bit of a story with them really. Um, so this one here, uh, let me give me a second to pretend that out. Oh yes. So this one here is the Framingham and the Framingham was actually from New Zealand when I was there. So that bottling, <laughs> Uh, sticker is actually from the bottling line in uh, New Zealand and I actually went to this winery as well so it kind of has holds a kind of a 
King Purpose, but it's a vintage 2010, guys, so I think maybe it might be ready to drink. <laughs> but um, yeah, still haven't found the occasion for it. But I have opened a couple of other bottles up, um, which you have seen. Um, so let's go through the next one. Uh, this one looks like it's from Harrods all the way back. Wow. Ah, yes. So this is the Chateauneuf de Pap, the View Telegraph. It's kind of um, known as quite a big cult Rhön favourite. Um, so it's um, it does really well on Robert Parker's sort of listing as well. And um, yeah, the famous kind of etching on the top there. But yeah, this is something to get around with. It's a 2009. Yeah. Could age a bit more, we'll see. But I think I'm just trying to find a better time to taste this wine, really. I just don't want to open it too early. I did find that with a previous one. I opened it a little bit too early, even after 15 years of um, tasting it. I mean, 15 years of resting it and aging it. Um, yeah, so this is going to have to be a real special day for this one. Um, let's go through the others. Uh, so this is the other one I was looking at. This I know is a Spanish wine um, from Ribera del Duero. And this is the Villa Cres, which is the 2006. So I've got all these wines, which are like now 15 odd years old. Uh, yeah, from Ribera in Spain. Uh, this was supposed to be known as a really good uh, Ribera del Duero uh, Spanish wine. Um, full-bodied, um, simple kind of tempano uh, grapes that go into this, but um, yeah, like I think the Spanish wines as well as Italian wines, like aging them for quite a while to really get the best out of them is um, sort of the good way to go forward. But yeah, that's um, that's another one. I don't want to have these to tell you the truth, but I almost feel like now, I mean, maybe in another couple of years' time. But yeah, this is another one for the seller. Put it back again. All right, so this is the next one up. I'm not too sure what's in this one. It is quite oh, well packaged. Oh, well, that was a bit more nice than this one. I actually put some sellotape around it. Uh, oh. Domaine de Chejou. Yeah, the Chateau de Pap. I remember I used to... This is a great wine as well. Um... From Chattanooga to Pap, I've got two of them by the looks of it now. Um, 2009, it's a great year as well. Um, should definitely age for maybe a couple of more years, I think, as well, because this should be tasting quite nicely. But I had tasted it recently, sort of five years back. Um, sorry, not that recent, but recent as far as aging wines. And um, yeah, this was still coming out really well, but there were so many much more depth and flavour to this that I thought that could come out from it. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I didn't realise I had this. There you go. That's why I should look through my um my cellar. Bring that over this way. So these two... I guess just uh, covering it with the plastics. Again, just trying to keep it on a level. That's just a, away from... Uh, well, on an angle, as I spoke to before, about being at 45 degrees with the bubble at the top end, uh, near the cork. All right, let's have a look at this one. Ah, so this is uh, the puzzle, which was, um, it's a really highly rated, like it's in the, usually in Robert Parker, sort of 95 points out of 100. Um, 2005, another good vintage, it's a, Sort of a Chateauneuf de Pap sort of blend, full bodied, and I mean this was always known that you're supposed to age this for a really long time. Um, but it's yeah, it's a beautiful bottle. It was, I think, most of my wines here, to tell you the truth, are around fifty to sixty pounds when I bought them. I'm not too sure how much in price they've gone up now, but I mean I was not holding these to sell them on onwards. That's for sure, especially if it's just one bottle. <laughs> but um, tell you the truth, they've aged really well and I'm really happy with them because I want them sort of elevated so they're at an angle like, like roughly like that. 
so that the bubble is just at the top there. So that's why it's a bit more makeshift. That's why I've kind of done that. But they, they've been aging really well, like the Polyac that I tasted recently, and there was a um, New Zealand Pinot Noir. And this final one. Ah, yes. Uh, this was from the sampler, and this I thought was quite amazing. This is from 1981, a Riesling. I mean, so this is more than sort of 35 years old. Incredible. Um, I, I mean, I'm trying to wait for a special occasion really to open this one because I just think this has got a taste amazing um, to have such an old Riesling to see how it will kind of flavours, profile, body, the acidity in it. Um, yeah, it's nothing really that I've come across that often, so I'm trying to do a good job of holding on to it for the right purposes at the right time. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the wines that I've got here, um, considering that the, the other wines that I had shown before that I'd drunk. Small selection, small selection. Maybe I need to build some more wines up. I think to be fair, if I bought any more wines, I don't know. I don't know when I'll drink them because I've keep been keeping these for around 15 to 20 odd years. So, and this one's like, I mean, surely I know what you're thinking. This should be ready to drink now, but regions can age really well. You know, this is a white, just for those who are not in the know about uh, sort of reasoning itself. But yeah, this could age really well. It's a spat laser, so it's got a bit of sweetness there for sure. Um, yeah, can't wait.